Um, tell me, is that is that staging on the bottom right? Is that staging or platform? Yes. Is that what that was? Okay. Well, it's so supposed to go down, but the program didn't let the stairs go down into a oh, hole. Oh, see, this is the problem. When we use these tools, we can't. But if we just do the pencil more messy, we can do anything we want. Um, so if those go down, and is the idea on the bottom right, kind of more right than bottom, is going to be kind of a mini stage? There will be a mini stage at the bottom, yes. And there's a kind of wall. On, but on, right, on the right side or the bottom side? On the right side is the stage. The okay, steps go very down good. into the hole. So we're, we're actually talking about a sunken arrangement as opposed to bleachers that would go up first in order to create down. Yes. Okay. I think that's I think that's really cool. Obviously, you know, to pull that off, we're talking about major structural issues and engineering issues. All of it can be done. It's just whether or not you can defend it when it comes down to the budget and, and et cetera. But I think there's something really interesting about that that instead of most classrooms are whatever level and then they might have a raised section, it's interesting to think of a whole classroom is raised with a down section. Um, and I, I find that intriguing. You could actually platform the majority of the classroom and run your electrical conduits and things underneath mm. that platform. You could put storage under. You could do a lot of things where basically the floor is, when I was in a fraternity in college, we actually built three foot high, we'd make three quarters of the room three foot high and then storage went underneath, and then it became a stage, and they were used socially and for a lot of reasons, but that was almost ubiquitous. And every, I, I'll, I'll leave your imaginations. Basically, they were sort of mini, mini social bars, but they, they basically, instead of trying to build up, they would just raise a platform across the majority of the floor, and then when they wanted down, it was whatever was a platform. Right. And I think, I think you could do something like that. Um, my wife. I have a middle school principal who's just coming home, so hi. Um, she's the, the real brains of the operation, just walked in. She's a middle school director at a school here in Ohio. Um, so I, I like that idea, and I, I, I know that 99% of architects and builders and CFOs would say no because of the implications of cost for a modest return. However, it would be really interesting to look at that. The majority of the floor is already being raised and using the subfloor as storage and a lot, and then you could actually do interesting things with the ceiling. So, you know, it's a, it's a braver solution, but it's interesting. And mm -hmm. you could, you could, you could fake it a lot more cheaply, uh, and, and convey the spirit of what you're talking about also. But what I like is this idea that you're trying to suggest that there's this different space within the space that's presentation based and you're lowering the, the presenter so that the audience is up high and, 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 and more of an experience as well as sight line and, and eye contact. So that's good stuff. Um, there's nothing in here that's not really doable. It really comes down to defending the pedagogy of the space um, as opposed to, you know, making this about cabinets versus windows versus whatever. Okay. You know, you can, you, so uh, I, you know, on the bottom, on the bottom of the drawing, is that are those cabinets or computers or what? Are, what are those four white blocks? Those are wall ca wall cabinets with counters yep. underneath. All okay, white so you're fronts. talking about you know like a kitchen arrangement where like kitchen, you know, yeah. Cabinets and then and then okay, great. So that's interesting also uh, because you're you know I think there are a lot of classrooms so that's a really uh, that kind of casework solution is is. I've, I've been with a lot of architects who have just that spec, and every classroom in a certain way has those, especially at the elementary school level. So that can be uh, that can be that can be defended really well. Um, and so when I look at that, I think, okay, that's that I think really practical, and I, I wouldn't worry about that. And I would shift and go, how can you how can you create niches within those? so that maybe there's a, a small little alcove for kids to read, or can you create window boxes in different parts of the room where there are these little sort of smaller one to three kids scale, kind of uh, I, almost underneath, I could almost imagine one of those bottom cabinets being gone, and, a, and a, almost like a bench cushion being put on the ground. So a kid, you know, I remember you, probably you as kids would put blankets over chairs in the living room and create these little caves. Mm -hmm. Kids love caves. They love to feel safe and feel like they're as big as the space. So it would be interesting to really look at not a single, you know, uh, from one end to another set of casework, 
but to really look at, at blocking in different ways, but that it's all a whole, but within it are these little punches. Um, and, and I don't think that's necessarily the center of your goal, but based on earlier things you had said, I, I, would, I, would, I would wonder about that. I would wonder about creating these little sort of nooks and benches and, and that sort of thing. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, it's a, it's a really doable, I mean, you know, I, I like that you're trying to protect daylight. I respect the fact that you're aware of the lockdown situation. So if we really push transparency, but if you have a lot of daylight, then you're inviting the opposite. And that is somebody doesn't even break into the school. They just put an elbow through the window. So, you know, if you're on a military base, they put bomb proof glass there. If you're in a normal situation, you know, a rock and an elbow, I'll get through any external window that's on a ground floor. So, you know, everything has a trade off, you know, and, and so if we're going to defend it in one area, we got to be aware of it in the other. But I would much rather have you be brave and ask for half the room to have daylight than to not have it because of the one in a million chance there's going to be a fire or an intruder. So, so I, I like what you've done, y'all. It's it's uh again I, I I I and I like a lot of the stuff that you started with. I like that it's an administrative area and not a teacher desk. So now all of a sudden I start to say, well, what's the next iteration? What's the next brave space? And I'm going to think of something like, you know, you go to an Apple store and you go to what's called the Genius Bar, you know? And what I love about Apple stores is not only are you there to spend a lot of money on really neat gadgets, but you're there to learn. It's actually a learning space, and you're there to talk to a genius about your <coughs> product and get feedback. A classroom or a series of classrooms, you have bars where kids essentially serve as, as, you know, the project genius or the technology genius or... Kids could be on two sides of a standing ball bar, if you would. Um, but it could also stand as the teacher's desk when need be. The way a librarian information center has an inside and an outside. So instead of a teacher's desk just flushed up against a wall, what if you created kind of a three or four foot high, kind of almost librarian information center? But kids were allowed to be on both sides as well. But there would be a desk below when a teacher needed to be private, but their head could still be above, but their materials were protected. Or it could just be a project, a standing project space. But it could also be when somebody, it could also be a presentation table. So as earlier when you said administrative economy, you didn't use the word teacher, and that's striking. Um, and you've wanted you know kids to be much more active. And so I just, I always wonder what's the next rabbit hole? What's the next what if? What's the next idea, even if it isn't literal to the solution, it's just, it, it, it expands the boundaries. So, you guys have done, you've done, you've done well. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that. You've got something that's both practical and, and is vision-based, and that's, that's the right combo. Thank you. So, Thank you. so again, if there's any criticism, it's going to be the same thing as, just because there's the software that allows you to use chairs, don't apologize for being quick and dirty with a magic marker either. <laughs> Right? And, and not try to like move it to the right. Because here's the deal. When you send a kid home to do a PowerPoint, they spend 10 hours trying to make the slide perfect and three minutes on content. And what I want is a 50-50 relationship or even 90% content and vision ideas and 5 or 10% actual, okay, here's what it looks like. So, and how can you be, how could you draw six versions of this classroom very quickly rather than learn the software to do one practical <coughs> so you know just when in doubt be messy first this is you've got permission but again i like it 